hello welcome everyone welcome to this tutorial today we are going to see about riveted joints in in machine design rivets are one of the major components that are used to join uh, different materials together we can do this using other joining methods like bolts uh, screws studs and so on we can also use welding rivet is one of the joining methods in machine design so today we, we we will see riveted joints in detail let's begin by defining what rivet is rivet is a short cylindrical bar with a head integral to it that means the head is manufactured with the body and with its tail the cylindrical portion of the rivet is called a shank or it can be called a body the lower portion of the shank is known as tail the rivets are used to make permanent fastening between plates such as in structural work shipbuilding bridge bridge is also one form of structure tanks boiler shells and so on the rivet joints are widely used for joining light metals instead of joining thick metals with large thickness we use rivets to join the plates with minimum thickness or small thicknesses that means light metals let's look at a diagram that shows the parts of rivets so as you can see from this uh, figure this upper portion that you look at is a head of the rivet so we only have a head on one side on the other side we have a tail this portion in between head and the tail is known as the main body the so in general this is a typical rivet before before it's applied to the joint there are various methods for making a riveted joints what's the function of rivets the function of rivet in a joint is to make a connection that has a good strength and tightness strength is necessary in machine design as you know it's very necessary to make a strong joint that can prevent a failure under operation so strength is very very important tightness is also important because tightness is necessary in order to contribute to the strengths and in addition to bringing additional strengths tightness is used to prevent a leakage leakage of fluids liquids as in the case of boiler or or ship hull riveted joint has good strength and tightness when it comes to method of riveting punching is one of the cheapest and the most commonly used uh, riveting method it's the cheapest method and it's used for relatively thin plates with minimum thicknesses and it's mostly used in structural works as in buildings roofs of buildings and so on since punching injures the material around the hole that means when we are punching a hole into some plates we are making a hole then during that operation the material around that hole will become damaged therefore drilling is used in most pressure vessel work pressure vessel is one of the uh, very sensitive machine that that needs very careful design and uh, careful operation so we don't we don't have to make a mistake so in that case we will first drill the hole that's appropriate for the given diameter of the the, the rivet and then we insert our rivet easily in structural and pressure vessel riveting the diameter of the rivet hole is usually larger than the diameter of the, the rivet itself so the diameter of the hole is typically 1.5 millimeter larger than the nominal diameter of the rivet so assume we have these two plates overlapping over one another so first we make the place for the rivet so this place for the rivet is larger than the diameter of the rivet itself like that and the diameter of this hole is 1.5 millimeter larger than the diameter of this rivet uh, this is a typical rivet which is ready for the operation ready to be joined so first 
we bring the two base the two base metals together in contact like that and this one is the other plate so we bring these two together so they are lapping over one another in this case so the hole is created and our rivet is inserted so this one this one that you are looking at this is the head the original head that has been manufactured with the body and this portion is the tail this portion in between it's a shank as we have seen so this head is backed up by something which is called backing up bar so its purpose is to back up the head so that when we apply the force from from above the rivet doesn't go down so it's it, it the head is backed up on the other side we have a die this die is used to apply the force we apply the force using hammer or any other uh, source of force and after after hammering it down this tail is going to take the shape of this die we'll see on the next figure what it looks like after the operation is completed so as you can see here this one was original heat this one is the heat that has been created uh, due to the applied force from above and uh, due to the shape of this die now that there's no tail anymore and there is only body and there is head on on both sides now this rivet is finished we cannot detach we cannot disassemble these components without bro breaking this uh, body or this rivet that's why what that's why we call uh, rivets are permanent joint so this one is initial position before riveting uh, application has been done this one is final position of the rivet depending on the temperature of the rivet itself we can classify riveting into two major categories one is called cold riveting cold riveting is when cold rivet is used to make the joint on the other hand when the hot rivet is used to make the joint then the process is known as hot riveting pretty simple cold riveting process is used for structural work again there's no no much care necessary in structural joints uh, while hot riveting is used to make leak proof joint that means if we assume for example one plate lapping over another plate like so and they are joined by by the rivet like that then if the rivet is hot previously then after the operation has been done it cools down after cooling down the length of this rivet decreases so when the length of the rivet decreases then there will be a tight joint very tight joint between the, the two metals that brings a leak proof joint that means since they are they are becoming very tight there cannot be any leakage very good property of joints a ship's body that you are looking at here is a combination of riveted screwed and welded joints because this ship is a very huge huge machine we cannot uh, use a single manufacturing from start to the end there is a number of manufacturing methods so obviously uh, most of the body will be joined by riveted joint there will also be screw there will also be welded joint inside this ship it's a huge huge machine in order to understand about riveting process uh, in order to look at the machines that are used to make riveting rather than manual riveting please go to these uh, youtube channels or simply click these links on the pdf i'll provide it will take you to the to the youtube channel and you can have a good understanding of riveted joints basically depending on uh, the methods whether we use machines or we use our hands the method of riveting can be classified to hand riveting or riveting by machine it can be done by hand or by a riveting machine a special purpose riveting machine in a hand riveting the original rivet head is backed up by the hammer 
like the one we have seen on the previous figure the head is backed up with a heavy bar or backup bar and then the die or a set is placed against the tail against the other hand and then blows are applied by a hammer then the second head will be formed that is known as hand riveting as the rivet cools down if you are using a hot rivet as it cools down it tends to contract that's what i have been saying previously the lateral contraction will be slight that is if we assume uh, if we assume a rivet having some diameter like that let's try to draw the head of this rivet it's a rivet so the diameter here is after cooling down there will be a, a contraction in diameter but that will be small that will be slight we don't consider that but the contraction in length will be significant and this is very very useful to make our joint tight so that the plates will be firmly hold together in machine riveting the die is part of the hammer which is operated by air hydraulic or steam pressure so in the case of machine riveting there's no separate die it's a part of the hammer itself and it's operated by air or hydraulic or steam pressure in different cases it differs what are types of rivet heads so depending on the shape of their heads there can be different types of rivets the one we previously looked at this kind of rivet is known as snap head so in this case we're talking we're concerned about the shape of the head depending on this only there are several several a number of rivets so snap heads are usually employed for structural work uh, in the machine riveting a counters sunk heads are mainly used for ship building where flush or very flat smooth surface are necessary a conical heads are also known as conoidal conoidal heads are mainly used in the case of hand hammering like this there are different kinds of uh, heads of the rivet so this one that you are looking at is what we call snap head this is snap head the dimensions of the head is not random it's relate it's proportional with the diameter of the rivet for in this case the vertical distance is 0 0.5 times the nominal diameter horizontally it is 1.6 times the diameter like so we can manufacture standard rivets here we get uh, a number of rivet heads for example this first case uh, the head has some angle it's connected to the body at some angle so if the angle between the two lines is 90 degrees we call this flat countersunk head 90 degree the word flat shows this surface there is no round surface so it's flat and the angle is 90 degree so we call it 90 degrees if the angle between the two is 60 degrees then we call it flat countersunk head of 60 degree so these kind of rivets are used in, in joining of ships and other uh, special purpose riveting because ships uh, travels over the ocean and uh, we don't want the surface to go outside of uh, the body of the ship so that the hydrodynamic force that's coming from the water will be reduced and uh, our ship can move forward with minimum force so you can go over this this is a major topic in rivets you have to understand these things the following are the the, the two types of the two types of riveted joints depending on the way in which plates are connected it's not about rivet it's all about the way the two main plates are positioned lap joint and butt joint let's use some figure to demonstrate this easily so if you consider one plate 
and there is another plate to be joined like that of course there is a there are some kind of tensile force uh, that's that's why we are joining using rivets and if there is a rivet in between like that so depending on the placement of the, the two main plates that means uh, this plate here is placed over this plate they are overlapping after overlapping them then only we insert our rivet so that's why we call lap joint they are lapping or overlapping over one another now the second type of the second type of joint uh, is butt joint butt joint but means putting one metal beside the other plate not over the other plate but beside the other plate just in contact they should be in contact we should bring them together so that they will come in touch but not overlapping that is known as butt joint to show them in diagram taking this as a first base metal and uh, this one as a second base metal and if we are trying to join these together like this then we call it butt joint so a butt joint is that in which main plates are kept in alignment or touching each other and a cover plate or a strap is placed over one side or both side it doesn't matter we can place it on one side it can be enough or in some case we can add another cover on the other side also for example if you have this one if you have the second main plate now if you want to join these two we have to place some kind of cover this one cover so we can only use this one and connect them by a rivet like that in some cases we can add a cover or a strap on the other side also this will give our our joint an additional strength because we are we are joining we are resisting the shear at multiple points one two three four at four cross section so this is how the butt joint works depending on how many cover plates we are using we can call them as single strap or double strap if you are using one cover plate only then we call it as single strap butt joint if we are using a cover on both sides we call it as double strap butt joint again let's once again go back to the basics if we are using only one cover like that and joining it in this manner then we are we call this as single strap but joint because we only have one cover plate if we are adding another cover on the other side also like this then we call it double strap but joint because we have two cover plates one here the other there again depending on the number of rows of rivets we can call them single riveted joint or double riveted joint this completely depends on number of rows of rivets look i'm not saying number of rivets i'm saying number of rows of rivets let's consider some example consider this lap joint so in this case if we have three rivets on this row how many number of rows do we have in this case only one like that so this is known as single riveted although there are three rivets in this row since we have only one row of the rivet then we call single riveted now what if we add another row like that 
in order to get additional strings we we may add other rows like this so in this case we have two rows of rivets so we call double riveted so the condition is the same for but joint also this particular case is lap joint the situation is the same for but joint also let's look at it so these are some figures of lap joint showing uh, number of rows of rivets so in this case as you can see we ha we only have one row of rivets or if you can see from the front view we only see one cross section we can't see the other rivets so if we can see only one rivet then we call single riveted lap joint now in this case we have two rows of rivets one two the rows are placed at appropriate distance from each other horizontally so in this case also how many rivets we can see from front view one two we have two rows that's why we call double riveted lap joint and in this case we have uh, some zigzag pattern right like that so we can say double riveted lap joint or zigzag riveting and that's it the situation is the same for triple riveting also this one is triple riveting this one is also triple riveting lap joint when we come to butt joint this one is butt joint how do we identify that okay we can identify that from this picture itself or we can look for the front view it's very easy if we look at the front view like that we have one okay sorry we have the first base metal we have the second base metal so they are not overlapping they are put together in contact that's why we call butt joint how many covers do we have we have one we have two covers so we call this double strap or double cover how many number of rows do we have okay when it comes to butt joint we see how many rows are there on each side on each side on this side on this side of the plate we have one row so this whole rivet one two three four rivets are all of them are connecting the second plate this plate with the two covers so we only have one on one side on the other side also we have one row so we call this single riveted we call this single riveted double strap why because we have two covers one two covers so single riveted because we have one row on each side double strap because we have two covers but joints the situation is the same when there is uh, two rows or three rows in this case how many rows do we have one row and uh, two rows on the other side of the joint also we have one row two row or we can just count on this one two so this is double riveted double strap but joint so you can go like this for triple or quadruple so as number of rivets or number of rows of rivet increase the strength of our joint increases also so that's all for today thank you so much for your attention